Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers, Shumanandu Bhai Bunara, welcome to Yuta all again. And um, we were just discussing um, about Eid. Um, Eid is a special time we want to spend with our kids and family and everyone. And sometimes it turns into a sour like um, our young youngsters goes out, uh, we don't know where they go. So with our young brothers, Jane, come back here, welcome back again. Thank you. And Thank you. Um, be back. we were just talking about um, mm. Eid issues, solution, what can we do in the future? So if we can talk about what can we do different the next Eid, mm. and if we can plan it ahead, maybe it will be a different yeah. um, drive maybe. What do you think? Okay. So I think, I think the first thing uh, for us all, uh, youngsters or olders, um, to think about is um, what makes, because you know, there's no point us doing things in our family if no one likes it, you know, if you, if you, let's say in your household, no one really likes presents or gifts, but they like going out for activities. So I think the first thing is to understand and speak to our children, you know, and find out what is it that they like. Because I think there's something we do in Bengali families that we think they like it. Mm. Um, so I'll, t I'll tell you a quick one, I know, um, if my mom's watching. So my mom, right, she brings a lot of drinks in the house. And for a few months, uh, she would keep buying this drink and I would keep eating it. <laughs> um, and then one day I said to her, why do you keep buying this? She goes, because you like it. And you keep so I said to her, I keep eating it because you keep buying it. And then we realize what's happening. Uh, but you know, sh she done it out of love. But I think we also need to really see what is it that our kids like? You know, what do our parents like? What do they like doing? Um, and from there start planning. Uh, and planning wise, I don't mean planning visiting uncle, sasa, mama's house all day, that's fine. But other things like eating the park, you know, Shubo was talking earlier, eating the park is huge. This year there were six, next year there'll be more. Um, you know, we don't have to go to the masjid to do our Eid Salah, we can go to the park. And when you go to the park, there's activities, there's fun fairs, there's games, other stuff. Like uh, Brother Hassan was saying, things like, um, what was it called? Uh, pass the parcel. Uh, I know years ago in our family, you know, we used to play musical chairs you put a nasheed on instead of a, a song and you let the kids run around and pick presents um, I think we need to adopt different things every year it can't stay the same because it becomes the same it becomes a schedule and we think the kids will think this is Eid I need to do this 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 and then it's boring again it's, it's part of a routine okay but I'm sure you know like our parents they are they do plan they do do the best try to make us happy do we, as a youngster, do anything for our parents? Do you, that's do you what I'm think saying. they? Um, I'm sure they had expectation as well. My kids yes. are working. My kids are 16, 17. Don't mm. they think of us anymore? Well, you have got to have something. That I think that you know, it's got to be a two-way process. Yes. It's, it's not something just for the kids. It's also got to be something that appeals to the parents as well. So you know, having like sort of family gatherings. I mean, mm. obviously you don't want it to always be family gatherings, yeah. but you want it to be something of that where because I mean, it lasts for three days, doesn't it? So I mean, I know not everyone can do everything over three days, but if you can do it on the on the main day, where you know do something that the kids can enjoy, but then do something where you know, that appeals yeah, to, um, can get to everybody. Too. So yeah. you know, that, that's the idea. Do you do you uh, do you plan it or something for your parents, or do you, would you have you done it, or would you do it? Would you plan it? Um, what we've done in the past, we've had like sort of family Eid parties. So we would hire out maybe like a venue, mm. and that's something that other families have done in Cambridge as well. Um, so they would get all the extended families to come together in one hall, and everyone would all bring like a dish. And they would also do like children's activities as well as play um, games and bring toys in so mm. they can all, all join in with that. And then, because obviously, we you know the older generations, they like to uh, do golf, as if that's one way of putting it. Um, they like to uh, have their own topics and things to discuss. And, uh, you know, so you, you let them do what they like and feel comfortable with. And then you do something that the children feel comfortable with doing as well. Because I think that's maybe where the problem is at the moment, that there's a bit of a conflict of interest where... The, the older generation, they're brought up celebrating Eid in a particular way, maybe mm. an old school way. I mean, that's probably what we'd call it. They might not yeah. take it in the same way, but, but for us, you know, you know, whether we were born here, you know, grew up here, and uh, you know, coming from, you know, living in a multicultural society as well, where you know, we come across all kinds of uh, you know, Muslims mm. from all various backgrounds, the older generation perhaps didn't have that luxury where they got to meet all these people from a young age. They, they're kind of narrow-minded in that sense, mm. really. Um, not, in, not trying to cause any offence in that, in that way, really, but, but you can see that mm. because of the way that they've been brought up, it's, they're like, it's not quite as liberal yes. in their thinking. So that's why you've got to try and cater to both mindsets, really, so that everyone can be happy, really. 
Let me, okay, if you want to present it to the, especially in, in a multi mm. society we live in, in a multicultural society, if you want to, uh, um, for our purpose, you want to tell your neighbors what we're doing, or you want to tell your friends what we're doing, like we do with that with non Muslims and stuff like that. Imagine Eid, you know, we want to bring them to the Eid party, and they love food, don't they? Mm. And what can we do if you want to do one? What can we do? I think, I think already it's happening. Uh, I've, seen, I've, I've seen some of the stuff you've been doing as well. Um, I know a lot of the mosques are now opening their doors up. Uh, so even though they have the Eid Salah, um, but after the Salah they have like soup kitchens, they have different things. But I think it can still go a step further. Um, you know, y your earlier question was what can we do for our parents? Um, I think as youngsters, we're a bit more energetic. We have those connections and as you were saying, um, we live in maybe a different time. So we can be proactive and make these things happen. So for example, if, if we go to the local center or something and we set up a day uh, or an event or a soup kitchen, we can invite not just our family and friends, we can invite these people as well. Um, it doesn't have to be grand. You know, you'd have to ha pay thousands of pounds and set something up. And you'd have to invite 100 non-Muslims. Um, you know, just look next door. You know, let's start from local near your house and then you can expand. Um, and especially things like, I know in Birmingham this year on Eid, they were doing things for the homeless. Um, mm, so good. for Dawah purposes, they weren't just showing that Eid is a time for us to celebrate, but it's for you, for those people who don't have anything, it's for you to join us as well. Um, I think, you know, there's, there's so much you can do, there's so many possibilities. But the first thing is about us making that intention that this is our world, our community, and Eid is a day of spreading that love and happiness, and we need to start doing it. Stop talk, let's stop talking about it, that yes, it's happy and fun and happy. Just saying it's fun and happy, it doesn't make it fun and happy. We've got to go out and do it, yeah, we've yeah. got to go out and do something. Because I met, I met lots of people, um, lots of people, I mean, I have a, I have a chance to meet non-Muslim, a lot of people. To, um, I've seen on your Facebook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some day, really one day, I decided to become a Muslim. Mm. One person I met was, she said, uh, one of her colleague, Muslim colleague, given in the Eid day, given a gift, and given the Quran. And another person says something like that. So when someone gives you something, they have this an amazing mind or heart. Yeah. They will accept it and they will read it. They're not very block-minded people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people in this country, they're open-minded. And she read the whole Quran in one month because she's a lawyer. And what she done was, she said, I planned it for one month. I finished it off. And I said, I'm going to take you an interview. Because I want to know, I'm not, you're a third person, I want to know what had you received from outside I the I saw your interview. Yeah. I was amazed. I was amazed. I said, tell me, uh, you know, a lot of accusation we're getting, we don't look after women, we don't look, you know, we see the second set in our class and all that stuff. What did you fall on? What did Allah say in the Quran? Yeah. And she said, it's a lot of respect there, man. Lots of respect there. And it just amazed me, subhanAllah, she is not a Muslim and she's saying, just someone give her a gift on the Eid day and then she read it and something else. I remember another person I said, would, would you come for Iftar? Mm. And she said, yeah. Would you? And look in her head, she said, I'm coming for Iftar, I have to fast. And she fasted, that lady I took yeah. an interview with and she fasted. And um, it's amazing. But you've got to take the first step though, because it's, it's a beautiful religion. It's a beautiful mm. religion. People are misusing it. SubhanAllah, if we think they're misusing it, it's our duty to bring their beauty and, 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 and the special side of the religion. We need to bring it out. If we don't, we're not doing justice. Just saying, these guys outside are no good, they're killing, da da da, da. It's, it's, Lip service ne never helps. Yeah, but we need, we need to, what you're saying is we need to be proactive. We need to show our religion uh, through showing it, not by talking about mm, it. Yeah. So these, these things where, you know, you said, you said an interesting point where she thought she had to fast. Now that's fine if she thinks it. But if we think it, that if we, for example, mm. we say, let's invite a non-Muslim, and we say, yeah, but they don't fast, why should they do iftar with us? So that's the wrong way to think yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, so it's these things that we need to change first in our community. Um, you know, because if we're thinking like this, we're not going to progress, we're not going to um, diversify, we're not going to integrate, and that's what we need to do. There's one thing that I was doing this Ramadan was on Facebook, mm. I was doing like a, a live stream. Mm. So I was testing it out really, I thought, let's see how it works. And every day I'll do like a, a diary entry and just show mm. like what Ramadan was like for me. But the main reason why I wanted to do this was so that I could show um, uh, like particularly my non-Muslim colleagues at work and all my other non-Muslim friends on Facebook about what Ramadan is about. Yes. So 
you know, like day one, for example, was, you know, what's mum cooking in the kitchen? So you get to see the kind of food that we have. So it gives them an idea, just to show that it is quite friendly. It's not all about, you know, because they get the idea that it's to do with, you know, you're starving yourself. And but fasting means so much more than that. There's yeah. spiritual benefits, there's health benefits. You know, you could go, we could go quite extensively into that. But um, it's just so they get an idea and an insight about what it's like. And, um, mm. and, you know, I thought that was a good way of doing it. And also doing it through a live stream, because, because you're live, people can comment as you're doing the video itself. And then, of course, once you've done the live stream, people can still watch it after and still, still comment. Yeah. So um, I thought that was quite a fun project, and uh, it was really good to get comments from other non-Muslims as well, and they watched mm -hmm. it. Uh, like another example was um, I went to the graveyard, went to the Gurustan, and uh, I went to show them, you know, why, particularly during Ramadan, why do we go to the graveyard? I mean, generally we, go to, we should mm -hmm. go to the graveyard quite often anyway, because it's important. It's a reminder for all of us about death. But particularly during Ramadan, there has to be more of a focus on that because you don't know how, what if that was our last Ramadan. Mm. You know, how many people thought that, you know, we'd see another Ramadan and, you know, we think that we're going to see the next one, but there's no guarantee on that, is there? So it's a reminder to all of us, really, particularly for myself first and foremost. But it's just so they get an idea and they understand that, mm. you know, there, there are other aspects to Ramadan that, um, that are worth talking about. No, I, I enjoyed it. You know, like when we were doing cooking, your mum was cooking and you were showing I was watching that one as well with my wife <laughs> and said, oh no, let's see what she says now. And she was so friendly with you. I know the, the, I, 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 if she's watching, you know, uh, salam to her actually. <laughs> um, she was so friendly with you. That's, that's the important part. You guys had a, a relationship just like friends. Mm. That is so important with your parents. You were saying, Mom, what is in it? And she was explaining, and she was showing it to you, and she was talking back. Uh, I remember um, uh, last year, actually, um, first time the uh, Shia Ramadan started, mm. and I asked one of my friends to fast, and then he d he done the non-Muslim. And I called um, Press TV that time, and they said they wanted to record it. Mm. And they said, can I come to your home and record? How you do your iftar? And when your friend comes, so want to have his interview. I said to my home and to my wife, actually, and she wouldn't agree. She said, no way. No one's going to come here and see how I cook. No way. What am I going to wear? Anyway, that's her own, own, own way of saying it. But after that, I was like, I'm going to talk to you after that. After that, I'm going to and you. This is the beauty. You can share your feeling. You can share. The, you can be right and wrong. But w when the difficulty comes in, because you have that relationship with your parents, they're going to come and tell you, I find it difficult here. Just, mm. you know, I, I want to make this decision. I don't like it. Mm. She can be open to you, and you can be open to her. I must say, this is missing in our community. I think our kids run away to the room. Mm. Or if I'm in the room, my parents don't come here because they think we're talking in something they don't understand, and they, they're somewhere else. Go to the three, if you don't have the love and, and the respect and the unity, then where are we going to go? Who, who's mm. going to be our best friends? If your kids know your best friend, or your parents know your at least one of the best friends. I'm not asking to be your only best friend, but... I think, I think there's a role for both uh, you know, the elders and the youngsters to play here. I think um, you, know, you hear a lot of youngsters, they say, my parents don't understand or they don't know how things are. You, know, you used to live in that time, we live in this time. Um, and a lot of parents, they have their ways set. Um, I think we have to respect um, the fact that things have changed very fast. For a lot of people over the last 50 years, they've seen a world become completely different. Technology, you know, the internet industry, everything. Um, it's just very different. So I think youngsters need to respect that our parents used to live in another time. Things are very different how it is and maybe they can't always keep up. But also parents need to respect and try to get involved as much as they can. I think it needs to work backwards because if children can respect that and understand it, uh, not be too, too quick to say you don't understand and if parents can try their best to try and get involved as much as they can I think we can meet in the middle. Um, I think there's a miscommunication. When I look after that, some of our parents may be seen um, bad boys yeah. in, in their namely. They not respecting the parents. But it doesn't mean everyone does that. We don't, not many people say our parents doesn't know anything. Mm. Not many people do that. Honestly they do respect their parents. May, they might not say in the face mm. because our culture we don't say I love you mom. Yeah. Or the parents say, I love you, son. We don't do that. Culturally, I'm right, somehow is blocked in. We should break that down. Right? I think the mm. first time when I was doing it, and I said, uh, one of my teachers said, go home and say to your old boy, I love you, son. Mm. And you'll see how difficult it is. Honestly, it was. Yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't find the <laughs> yeah. reasons. I was looking for reasons. I called him, I said, I was looking for reasons. See what he done good. And I'm, on that base, I'm going to say it. But 
we need to say it. honestly these kids in this country that are boisi am ready we expect our oldest to say something good about us mm. and they probably expect us to say something back to them they afnal to khosto kore amra lagi pachanto lagi uh thank you you know something like that they expect yeah. us to say but from the both side it a on na so we only have two minutes left but they ran would you like to say something a minute to uh our viewers yeah so if we're talking about the best ways to celebrate eid and so as we just mentioned earlier you know i think first of all you know bring everyone closer to home you know bring your family bring your friends everyone in the community i think that's the best place to start off with you know charity starts at home mm. i think um most people would agree with that so you know coming from cambridge myself you know I've, there's a lot of potential there for great activities to take place there and uh, you know if there's any opportunities um you know if you want to try and get involved and you know that speaks to me and uh, you know we can do something quite special there and I come to london quite often anyway so um you know to do all kinds of activities here so you know I'm mm. always open to opportunities and to and to working with other people as well so uh, maybe we could do something in the future yeah. and uh, maybe Fantastic. something with yourself or inshallah yeah, we're expecting you to be more regular here now then yeah. inshallah we'll see what happens so the jane your last word to well, the um viewers. thank you to everyone uh for tuning in for listening i think for me um you know there's plenty of op- uh, opportunity and uh, projects going on you've heard about sweet eid iftar 1000 and there's going to be more coming up Uh, I think what I wanted to say to the listeners and viewers out there is you know next year it's not far away um but whether it's eat or not do something get involved whether you're a young person there's lots of stuff available for you if you're an elderly there's still stuff available for you so make an intention to do something uh because you'll really help you be a better person and and a better asset to our society and that's what we need jazakumullah khair shumaran to bhai bonera apnader shomoy jonno dhonnobad um i have learned so much from them and we can see our third generation actually tader je somman ta dekhachen tader pitar der jonno mader jonno ebong samajer jonno i think we should respect that as well um amra shob somona hore je amader bachchara noshto hoye there is no future this is is rubbish you know the future is bright look at them and um, the things they do amader ashole der amra boshe geche kichu um shopno gula ache phuron hoyse na i think we should join them inshallah in this way our you know the dreams will come true inshallah amader kichu do bhul hoye thake apnara doya kore maaf korben is no intentional amra chacchi je apnara amader bhabishyot ebong amader eid gula kibhabe sundor hoy eid kibhabe amra aro sundor korte pari because it's amazing this is from uh, there is a gift from god and i think we need to make it into a a beautiful thing so others from other faith when they see it and they say mashallah this is something special and especially our neighbors um hope to see you next week and um, see you next week inshallah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh assalamu alaikum